Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Wednesday, the 29th day of July 2020, and not a lot to talk about. You see, I don't have that many tabs open today. Yes, we have PTC 9, and that would seemingly be the big news, and it is, but there's still a lot of uncertainty with it, so there's not a lot to kind of get into other than what we know and what we think we know and then what the forecasts show down the road. Does that make any sense? Well, I'll try to outline it here and explain it as we move along. Let's start with the five-day track map from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see a couple of things to point out. This is the representation of the wind field, this orange area here. And so we are seeing tropical storm force wind in this orange area, not everywhere. It's not completely like the whole area is seeing 34 knot winds or higher. But within that area, you're getting some banding and some thunderstorms, and every now and then, you do get some 34 knot winds. And those winds are impacting portions of the Northeast Caribbean, and that's gonna be the case over the next several hours into and through tomorrow. This will include eventually Puerto Rico over here. Uh, so even though it's not a named storm, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to have... Well, it does have a name. It's called PTC-9. All right? So even though it's not um, Isaias or, or whatever it's called... In fact, I've got so many different people um, trying to pronounce it. It's just... I almost give up on it. But it, it doesn't have to have a name to, to have impacts. And it doesn't have to, have to be a hurricane to cause significant problems. And I think we know this by now, right? I'm just trying to keep reminding you of it. So the track takes it towards Hispaniola, and you would think that this would pretty much be the end of it. Uh, we talked about that yesterday with Jack Sillen, and if you've been following hurricanes for any amount of time, you know that Hispaniola is the tropical cyclone shredder with these high mountains down here, tearing up the low-level circulation, whatever of it there is. And then the forecast takes it on across the Florida Straits and maybe up the west coast of Florida, maybe. Just maybe. We'll see. This, all of this, is very, very uncertain. And this over here is just very uncertain. Okay, you have two varies here. We'll put two and one very here. Seriously, it's very uncertain overall. And we'll explain as we go along. And in fact, it's mentioned very well by the forecaster that wrote the 11 a.m. advisory, Dan Brown. Uh, great forecaster, been there a while. And... He knows what he's talking about. Of course he does. And here, this third paragraph and the key points, that the details of the long-range track and intensity forecast remain more uncertain than usual since the system does not have a well-defined center and, is it ex and it is expected to move near or over portions of the Greater Antilles later this week. However, it could still bring some rainfall and wind impacts to Cuba, the central and northwest Bahamas, and Florida, into the weekend, and everybody should certainly monitor its progress. You know, just monitor what's going on. Uh, no need to worry about it right now in terms of it being a significant wind maker. That may come, it may not. This, this paragraph right here really helps to sum it up. A lot of uncertainty. Why is that the case? Well, if we look at the satellite imagery, let's take a look at this from a different perspective. We know what we don't know, and that's the uncertainty part, okay? Does that make sense? We know that we don't know certain things. That's a fact. We also know we have a large tropical wave, a big piece of energy, over something else we also know, very warm water temperatures. So these are all the things that we know for sure. Certain entities and certain facets of this are in place. Others are not. I think right now the most important element that's missing is the fact that we do not have a well-defined circulation down at the surface, a well-defined rotary circulation, 360 degrees of wind, all quadrants. That has not occurred yet. It's definitely more, you know, twisty, whatever you want to call it. There's more cyclonic rotation with it today. I think we can all see that very clearly here in this visible satellite animation. Uh, this is courtesy of the weathernerds.org site, weathernerds.org. And there is convection with it. And a little bit of banding trying to show up. Not a lot. 
but it is a giant piece of energy, that's for sure. And if it's not going to run into these islands, which it will, it would eventually take off and probably strengthen into a hurricane at some point. But it does have to battle with these islands, and we're almost certain about that. Okay, I'd say 90% sure that much of the energy with this will pass through the Greater Antilles. Okay, and that will hinder its development. But what we have to look for, and I'm starting to see a little bit of evidence of it now, that maybe the circulation develops up here and kind of is able to pinwheel and come on the north side of Hispaniola instead of right down the middle. And so let's look for that. Because if that scenario happens where the, the energy kind of pivots around like this and comes out this side over here overall with a low level center and it trucks along the north side of Hispaniola, that's still destructive to some extent because you have down sloping wind. Jack talked about that yesterday. Uh, these mountains in here, when you, when you bring air down out of the mountains, orographic descent where the air is descending, it compresses and warms, and warm air does not hold. Uh, well, warm air holds moisture, but dry air does obviously does not, and that's a negative. Okay, so interesting times coming up. These next 24 hours are really going to be telling. And the vorticity signature itself is improving. There's no doubt about it. Uh, let's zoom in on this, and I'll show you. It's starting to focus more and more towards the middle right in here you see that so it's still oblong we see that but it's definitely getting there and I think what we're gonna see and let's watch for more of the vorticity to concentrate towards the center and then where that vorticity center goes obviously recon is out there uh, the US Air Force hurricane hunters checking it out in person with their plane and their radar etc and we know what's going on and there's no west winds and no northwest winds yet it's still not quite there and once it does once they do find those winds it'll be upgraded and the name will be that i name that we keep talking about all right um isaias or something like that <laughs> i don't laugh at the name it's just hard okay so uh impacts they're already happening those impacts through uh, parts of the Northeast Caribbean islands and over to the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, rain in Puerto Rico, and some of this rain could be heavy, and that can cause flooding and mudslides and flash flooding and problems if you're traveling. There could be some of these bands could bring tropical storm force winds, especially at higher elevations, but as I said before, it's not everywhere. That whole region is not just blowing at 34 knots usually the stronger rain bands bring that wind down to the surface and there's no way to know so the best thing is to just kind of be prepared be aware of it of course you are and just use common sense out there stay out of the water um, if you're, you know, have a small craft a boat whatever probably not a good idea to take that out of port while this is going by you would think that you would know this but you're down there having a good time maybe not worried too much about the weather well sometimes you do need to at least be hyper aware of it because uh, it can bite you if you're not careful. So we'll watch this radar. This is easily accessible. Weather.gov. Click on radar. Go to the Puerto Rico sector. And uh, you can check out this radar anytime you want to. Now, what about the future? These are the things that we know. What about the things that we don't know? I.e., where this might be headed. Well, there's a lot of different models. The GFS, the Canadian, the UK Met, the Euro. Those are the four pretty good global models you know the European typically when you do a scorecard on it wins out most of the time but let's just focus on the euro today all right we cannot spend 30 minutes 45 minutes just going on over going on go over slow down Suddeth going over all the models there I said it uh, so this is the ECMWF 850 millibars again this is my favorite layer of the atmosphere because without a well-defined body framework, we talked about this before, right? If the framework sucks, the whole thing's gonna suck. And in this case, that's what we're looking for. And in the initialization from the Euro here, that's pretty representative in the modeling of what we see there. Would you agree? I agree, that's pretty darn good. So the Euro has a pretty good handle 
on the initial setup overall. And again, this is the 5,000 foot layer of the atmosphere. Nice outline here, if I can let you see it, of uh, the Western Atlantic Ridge. There's our perturbation in the pressure field down here, the vorticity, the energy, and this is the initial. All right, so let's move it out, 24 hours. That looks more healthy. You see that little concentration of vorticity right there? That shows me that the European is suggesting that from now until 24 hours from now, as it passes very close to or over Puerto Rico in the Virgin Islands, that it gains organization and focuses that vorticity just enough that this should get named. All right, so let me do something here. Let's go back to the satellite picture. So as this is happening and it moves over these islands right here, I want to make it very clear if this really does start to ramp up going over Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, you could see some pronounced effects with this. Those stronger rain bands uh, will help to bring those winds down to the surface. So keep an eye on that and be mindful of that overnight tonight. You know, have a way to get alerts on your smartphone, all right, uh, from the Weather Service out of San Juan or whatever your local municipality, the government of the Virgin Islands, etc. And then the same is going to be true for the eastern side of Hispaniola there, which is, of course, the Dominican Republic. You guys there, they get YouTube there. You can watch this. Be mindful of this. It doesn't take a name or a hurricane to cause big problems, especially when these are intensifying. That's a lot of energy, a lot of moisture coming. We have to focus on the impacts more than the overall hype game of, oh, there's a hurricane coming or there's not a hurricane coming. Way too much emphasis on that. We got to talk about what to expect. All right, so that's 24 hours on the Euro. 48, now it's got my attention. That is the vorticity signature of a pretty healthy tropical cyclone. No doubt about it. All right, so this is 48 hours out, Friday morning in the central Bahamas. It could be well on its way. Not very large, it's kind of like it bundles up some of the energy is still down here. This will probably keep going in this direction. This gets isolated, probably helped by these islands. Jack yesterday talked about the PVS, the potential vorticity streamer, getting separated. Well, sometimes tropical waves get broken and one piece goes off and the other piece continues in its direction. And the one piece that took over can consolidate like we're seeing here because you still see there is some sharp curvature to these wind flags down here. So this piece of energy goes this way, the rest of it up this way. That's got my attention for sure, all right? Mark might need to be getting in a vehicle and driving somewhere by Friday morning. All right, so uh, 72 hours out. Again, that's pretty healthy. And you remember, let me point this out. The European was pretty solid on Hannah. It nailed it. You remember the old expression, the European, the Euro nailed Sandy. If you were tracking this stuff in 2012, 2012 you remember what that's all about. So this has my attention. Uh, that's pretty close to Florida, right about similar to where Dorian was, a little bit south and west of where Dorian was. Hopefully, not nearly the same intensity. But you guys in the Bahamas, a strengthening tropical cyclone coming through your area, we need to pay attention to this. People are still dealing with and suffering from Dorian last year. All right, It's not like they just magically rebuilt everything. This will have impacts for those areas. Okay, Grand Bahama, Nassau, Eleuthera, all those areas, pay attention to this, please. All right, So that is, uh, what are we at? Nine, uh, 72 hours, only three days out. My goodness. All right, uh, 96 hours out. I mean, what is the deal lately? Matthew, and now Dorian last year, and then Isaias, hey, I think I said it right, um, coming up the east side of Florida potentially, that's four days out, and then finally at day five, uh, real close to the low country of South Carolina, and that's where we're going to end it for now, and I know that you might get frustrated, come on, man, show day six and seven, why? There's absolutely no point, you know, it's, there's not. It, it's so random what could happen. It could be 
here or it could be way over here. You just never know. And I think we need to just focus on those five days. All right. Maybe when we have one way out in the Atlantic, we can look beyond five days to see what the pattern might be. But that's later on. I'm going to take it on a case by case basis for this one because there's so much uncertainty already. I find it to be irresponsible for me to go talking about even possibilities at days six, seven, eight, and beyond. It's just wasting your time and mine. All right, so let's focus on what we know. We did that. We know it's coming through the islands now. Let's prepare, be ready. And then from there, this has potential now to be an impactful system. Once again, maybe for the east coast of Florida there through the Bahamas, and we will be on top of that uh, in the days ahead. And that's a short amount of time, three to four days possible landfall through the Bahamas and into Florida, possibly. You know, increased surf, there's going to be impacts from this. What they are and to what extent and for exactly where, we will figure all that out together. All right, before I sign off, reminder for everybody, I am on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. I tweet once in a while. Once things get going, I'll be tweeting a lot more, especially when we're out on the road. You're already watching on YouTube, so subscribe, become a subscriber on the channel, and... Make sure you enable your notifications. I hear my kids, when they watch YouTube, a lot of the big-time YouTubers talk about that. And, I mean, it makes sense that we get notified when I post a video. And we are supported by our fantastic crowdfunding group. Over 320 strong now on Patreon alone. Several dozen more on our Hurricane Track Insider Legacy Edition that's been around for 15 years now. Um, if you want to know more, uh, more about what we do with crowdfunding and how it can benefit you, patreon.com slash hurricane track. Hey, as always, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your attention from your side of the screen. Whatever that device may be, it's great to have you. I am Mark Sutteth, hurricanetrack.com. I'll be back with much more for you tomorrow.